What up my freaks, Rowena Sensite here with part 34 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Emmerich Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, Feodin and her Skycutters obliterated Grimgor and a pretty massive horde of greenskins, but uh, well, we weren't done with the greenskins quite yet, as we ended off the episode with Tyrion and this little Bretonian settlement Aquitaine under attack by Grom de Ponch with uh, many a gobble. Though you gotta remember that uh, Garami can power them up pretty significantly. 48 melee attack with lethal poison on the forest gobbles. And for those of you who remember my Grimgor campaign, you'll remember that the forest gobbles, despite being tier 1 units, were able to rack some up some insane kill counts, and in a few cases some of the highest kill counts uh, that we got in that campaign, which was impressive. Uh, so uh, despite them being tier 1, you probably shouldn't underestimate them. Anyway, time for Tyrion's new and improved army nearly in its final form. My the two Phoenix Guard that are to replace uh, the Silver and Guard to do its thing. Uh, let's see how it goes. Go. All right, that confused me for a second perspective. I mean, anyway, here we go. Looks like no speech from the, uh, wait, is the peasant mob? The peasant mob is the leader of this particular, uh, of this particular garrison. That's curious. I guess the peasant mob was the first unit in the list, but you would think that if there's a men-at-arms unit, yeah, there's a spear men at arms unit here, for example, that it would be the leader unit rather than the peasant mob, though I suppose at the end of the day they're all peasants, or maybe the Battle Pilgrims would make for an even better leader unit as they are unbreakable as well. Again, not so much the peasant mob, though they are also a mob of peasants. So, anyway, uh, the differences are slight. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Looks like the enemy will charge directly towards our Bretonian allies rather than waiting for their reinforcements, which is kind of interesting. Usually, I think the AI would wait, but I guess in this case, it sees the weakness of the peasant mobs before them and decides to uh, go on in. And that's just fine, though, because we're on the field reasonably quick, and Tyrion will ride through the ranks ranks of peasants, I'm sure, and trampling a fair few of them underfoot before trying to uh, head directly for Grom the Paunch. Getting trapped for a little bit by the forest spider riders, and that's fine. We're also going to not get engaged immediately, but rather form up behind the peasants. Let them take a few hits, let the uh, charges of the greenskins be blunted um, by human flesh, and then we'll, uh, we'll clean up as needed afterwards. Anyway, Tyrion has arrived and will be whacking away at uh, Grom the Paunch here while our cavalry start moving around uh, the enemy units. Uh, Exalted Illyrian Reaver Archers will give chase to the enemy orc, nope, Goblin Wolf Chariots here. And charge them in melee while of course continuing to do range damage while the Silver Helms charge into the back line of enemy uh, Spider Riders. And some Gabos here as well. Nice to see a little bit of work for the Silver Helms. They've obviously been outshined very much by Dragon Princes, unsurprisingly perhaps, uh, but uh, nonetheless outshined by them throughout this campaign. So it's good to see the Silver Helms do a little bit of work, especially with their buffs. Their stats are pretty darn solid. 58-57 on the Lances, for example. And a solid melee defense for a Lance a using Cav. That isn't Bretonian or, uh, for example, Blood Knights or something like that. Anyway, the enemy melee line is having a fairly tough time, though their flanks are still uh, looking okay. It looks like their center is in much worse shape due to the uh, fact that tower range units are now firing away 74 melee defense on those gate guard units. You can just spam gate guard and just, yeah. <laughs> but I guess you could do the same thing with Lothar and Sea Guard and such. Anyway. The gate guard are just stronger. Uh, Grami's in pretty bad shape now, down below half HP, and ooh, just lost another quarter of his HP to Tyrion's hits, who's up to 1.3k oh, weapon strength. We do have our, uh, our regiment of renown, the Keepers of the Flame. Every single one of the fair few units, fair few models in this unit, I should say, surrounded by gobbles, arrows raining and uh, uh, raining down from uh, behind, and hitting our own units on occasion. 
<laughs> a hell of an arrow right in this guy's uh, in this guy's midsection. But anyway, uh, it does look like the Phoenix Phoenix Guard should have no trouble at all at uh, dealing with the forest goblins. And we can even move in some of those silver and guard to help out. Just for the sheer numbers. Arrows continue dropping. I do believe Tyrion has finished off Grom the Paunch over on the right flank and has now waded into the fight to uh, send the stone trolls scurrying away. A few enemies are still fighting on the left flank, but by the looks of it, they're on the way out as well. At least of Grom's main stack. We do still have his reinforcements coming in, so we're trying to clean up as many of the uh, gobos and the, uh, uh, and the runners in particular before joining the fight against the rest of the incoming forces. Nasty Skulkers are out, gonna back away some of the cab, it does look like some of them have at least taken damage, and gotta be careful about charging into trolls and the like. Speaking of trolls, Tyrion is still giving chase, it would be nice to actually destroy them here. And Tyrion should be able to uh, knock a troll down with, theoretically, every single hit. And we're still getting a decent amount of shots in from the, uh, from the Illyrian Reaver archers as well. Of course, trolls continue to regenerate even as they run, so can't be letting them run unharassed like that. Anyway, looks like more trolls are moving in. River trolls this time, not stone, however. The AI does have a tendency to build stone trolls over river and regular trolls, which is perhaps surprising because it's almost like the AI recognizes and that the stone trolls are better. Although I'm sure that it doesn't actually. Or maybe it does, maybe it offers them a higher sort of, well, because of their stats and general survivability, gives them a higher point value and thus is more likely to get them on the field. Anyway, Silver and Guard holding off those stone trolls. The rest of our units are sort of reforming. Certainly taking a little bit of damage on the Keepers of the Flame here as well. Actually, due to their relatively low model count... This guy really didn't enjoy getting hit by that arrow, damn. Uh, huh. Could probably actually use some healing on them, but this army probably won't have a, a healer. I mean, we can't put, we can't put, oh damn, those river trolls got absolutely obliterated by range fire before they even reached uh, the Keepers of the Flame, and the additional gobos and orcs uh, getting wrecked by that uh, chain lightning as well. But yeah, I don't want to put a lore of life in every single army, which is why uh, we don't have them here, though they would work, it would work really well with the Keepers of the Flame. High HP, relatively a low model count, especially for infantry. Would work really well with them, but anyway. Uh, maybe we can use, I think we have an item that gives us a one-off use for Apotheosis or something like that. Maybe we'll uh, take a look at that and put one in this army so that we could get the occasional sort of one item, one heal off on the uh, Keepers of the Flame. Who have waded back into the fray against the Orc Boys, but uh, like the Gabos before them, and these guys should offer no issue to us. And by the looks of it, neither will the rest of the enemy army, as they will shatter and the battle will be ours. The cavalry, after the engagement with the main army, got a little bit busy and just chasing enemies down, which is unsurprising. I wonder if that uh, impacted their kills heavily, but I suppose, uh, especially against chasing down trolls, that might be an issue. Anyway, we'll do the chasing half screen as we usually do. Nice fight. All right, there we go. A very nice little fight, courtesy of Grom the Paunch there, and all those peasants, well, not like we can tell apart the peasants from the non-peasant humans, they're all roughly the same, uh, were taking arrows and uh, taking hits as well, while we did the damage with our, uh, with our range units. Our most melee and missile infantry kills went to the Keepers of the Flame Phoenix Guard, who lost apparently one unit total, which changed too bad at all, and hardly surprising considering their eliteness. As for the cavalry, it does look like the exalted Illyrian Reaver archers and did outdo all the Silver Helms by a pretty wide margin. Hardly surprising though, as the exalted variant is close to Silver Helms in terms of its melee capability, but also has a pretty darn strong range capability as well. So a nice mix for those guys. Anyway, we'll ransom those captives for the influence in the cash. And what is this? Tiny little garbage underway interception die, and we'll take the influence as well. Alright, very nice.
Let's see if anybody else is willing to attack us. I don't remember if we were close enough for anybody to be in range. I'm going to attack military lines with Durthu. Durthu, man, I'd love to. And I'd love to have access for two more of your units, but alas. Uh, you're too much of a maniac. Decline the peace treaty with subtle torture. I also got to pay attention to where exactly Malice is going and... Ah. I wasn't expecting that. Sloppy Crookshanks, uh, Crookshank, rather, and the Grey Point Scuttlers will in fact attack Lario the Radiant, probably because she's out of mana and she's in March stance. Uh, that should make this battle pretty interesting. Uh, it is the Life Army. Brewer Protector of Life now has a ton of Treek, and of course we are waiting for more Sisters of Avalorn since Lario buffs them, but for now, and we'll use all of the uh, Tree Men and Treek, and just gotta be careful about losing the Dryad since we don't have any uh, re way of getting more. Away we go. Alrighty, here we go, and here so do they. Warplate and Ganon's firing immediately into our Sisters of Avalon, Avalorn, or rather, knocking four of them out. Interesting. Did each one of the bolts of, uh, well, Warp Lightning knock out a single Sister of Avalorn? Was that what happened there? Hmm. Well, we gotta be careful nonetheless. Gonna pop the Shield of Thorns for that missile resistance on the Sisters of Avalorn, pumping them up to 30 and 10 missile and ward, though that's probably not going to be sufficient to do much against the uh, against the Warp Lightnings, meaning we just have to get to the Warp Lightnings fast as we can. We have Vanguard deployed some of our drones yet to try to hit them in the back and more are moving through the trees oh, it does look like the enemy will countercharge us with its doom wheel it is only a single doom wheel that they have and kind of smartly it's sort of using our units of treekin for cover that said it's not going to be able to do damage to it and all of our range units will try to focus this thing down we certainly don't want the Doom Wheel moving towards our range, and it will not, and because it will get obliterated. We do move a Brew War forward to try to annoy the enemy, but unfortunately the enemy does hit us with that Howling Warp Gale, and here comes the focus. Looks like all the enemy range units, just as a player would do, will try to focus the big old dragon down. Our own range units are firing back at the enemy, and ooh, looks like the Warp Lightning Cannons are trying to help the Warp Fire Throwers and Poison Wind Globadiers and attacking Brew War, who quickly drops down to about 30% HP. We're trying to outheal the damage he's taken, the Star of Avalorn and Earth Blood both up on him, though unfortunately Lariel is not a high enough level to be able to use uh, a regrowth as yet. This is going to be very dangerous. Fortunately, the Poison Wind Globadiers with their anti-large are out and we'll be switching to those Warp Fire Throwers, which are certainly still a uh, big darn threat to larger units. On the bright side, I suppose it does mean they're not focusing the uh, uh, vulnerable to fire Treekin as they're wasting all of their weapons teams on dealing with the uh, and dealing with the dragon who just barely 10% HP still gonna pop that shield of thorns and it's going to try to break its way out of there the vast majority of the enemy's melee units are however being held back by the Treekin and allowing our range units to continue firing while the dryads have in the meantime overrun and the enemy warp lightning positions and this battery will grow silent and of course the lariel here are leading the way and protecting the uh, relatively vulnerable uh, Dryads, especially as they are fighting Death Runners among Storm Vermin out here. I see a Warp Lightning coming down in the middle of our Sisters of Avalorn and or Gate Guard here. But by the looks of it, not a crazy amount of damage. What's our missile, or what's our 40% um, spell resistance? And 30% on the Sisters? Eh, not so bad. Not so bad. And the piles of rats have certainly not been able to uh, go through our Treekin. Treekin are insanely tanky, after all, as a monstrous uh, uh, monstrous infantry unit. And on top of that, I don't believe we've lost a single one as yet. 
despite the fact that we haven't actually dropped any heals on them so far, as the dragon has uh, has needed every earth blood that we could muster. Nice little contest between the rat ogres and the Shuriken throughout this battle, but it looks like the contest will soon come to an end. Uh, the right flank of the enemy collapsing, it looks like the center of the enemy are just about done as well. Simply unable to find purchase in the uh, iron tough bark of the Shuriken. Alright, now the tree can probably not doing a crazy amount of damage. What do we have here? Yeah, 7.4k, 50 kills. But they're there to hold the line, and damn well did they hold the line. Brew Wars still looks absolutely massive as it is a larger a model of Forest Dragon. It would actually be nice if we could get a few more Forest Dragons from the other Elven... Uh, uh, the other Wood Elven factions. I know that the Sisters of Twilight don't have access to uh, Forest Dragons as yet, because they haven't tiered up to tier 5, or they haven't built the building. I don't know about the other Wood Elves. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not so sure that they'll be able to reach tier 5. Either way, it looks like with that, the Great Point Scuttlers are done. They will book it on out of there. Alariel will hunt down the enemy lord, and perhaps I should have started with that and sent Alariel to kill it, uh, so that uh, the Howling Warp Gale wouldn't have been able to focus down our dragon. Either way, we survive to heal another day, and the dragon is back up to about a quarter of its HP, which is not so bad. A live and learn as it's a preview for when Alariel makes landfall and starts attacking Clan Scryer, as eventually we'll be dealing with the same sort of situation, plus uh, the danger of nukes as well. Alright, not too bad. Not a particularly dangerous battle in some ways, though Brewer came very, very close to getting focused down. The uh, three units of Gutter Runner Slingers, plus and the Poison Wind Globadiers, plus and the Warp Fire Throwers, all firing at him while Sl Sloppy Crookshank was keeping him locked in place with that, uh, uh, with that Howling Warp Gale, which lasts such a long damn time. It was very, very dangerous. Fortunately, the Star of Avalorn ability, or staff of that? No. Uh, yeah, the Star of Avalorn regeneration ability on top of the uh, uh, on top of the healing that uh, Lariel had was enough to keep the dragon alive, if just barely. Definitely got to be careful. I mean, uh, especially considering we for the or for those of us watching the uh, uh, the Skaven campaign, uh, we'll know just how ridiculous that spell can be against aerial units. Ransom those captives. There's not much remaining to this army. And by the looks of it, it'll probably back off. I don't know whether it sinks automatically or not. Ally begins outpost construction. Pestilence scheme performed. Ally begins outpost construction. Ally mission successful. A bunch of enemies killed in battle. Hide striker for Feyadin. She keeps racking up sort of uh, fighty talents or traits. Uh, despite the fact that she isn't, I guess, technically a fighter. But it is Feyadin after all. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Tilne, scroll of amber, scroll of blast. Our uh, ring of hook on. Wait, how did we get an enchanted item? How did we get this? No, seriously, how did we get this? Uh... Huh. I genuinely don't know. Maybe it was a mission reward for something. Uh, Bard for Alariel, sure, Great Eagle for whoever Rodar is. A... Who are you? Oh, this guy. Uh, okay, it doesn't really matter. And there we go, Caledorian tradition complete, which means more stuff for Emric himself. I guess Ulthuan's Glory is the next thing to do. It is more upkeep reduction, and if it weren't for the need to recruit more units, I would have gone that before Caledorian tradition. Anyway, still gotta try to get that research up and running, trying to get these down to at least one turn, and this stuff is four turns, which is quite a long time. We still have a surprisingly large amount of tech that we need to get done. Not that we really need to or need said tech, mind you, but it's the principle of the thing, as it usually is. Anyway, Emrick, you're going to take Great Desert of Araby as the first thing, as that is one of the things we wanted. And you're going to occupy it. And that'll be occupied at tier 2. We will uncollect the income. We will pop it immediately into... 
Uh, I guess we could reduce this... Well, actually, the Rebuild Lost Bunder isn't going to help here. So, a Secluded Oasis its really the Buried Caravanserai that we want for the uh, Trade Tariff Increase. So, we'll start with that. And, frankly, the place will grow fairly quickly. So, we're just going to go into Tribute to the Phoenix King. And just buff up the uh, money we make faction-wide. And there we go. Great Desert of Air be secured. Okay, so we'll push onward towards the Wizard Caliph's Palace. We will turn upon the Cetra, uh, probably mostly to take the uh, Black Pyramid of Nagash, which looks to be fairly well defended here. And as I said last episode, since uh, well, obviously we're running out of uh, we're running out of interest for this particular campaign, or it's starting to wane, I suppose. Uh, we gotta look towards ending it relatively shortly, and in the desert is where Imrek will likely end his campaign. So and I gotta find some good battles for him there to end his uh, time. Anyway, Feyadian, you destroyed Mr. Grimgore last time around, and you should be able to auto resolve this place i guess we'll occupy it we could sack it we're going to transfer it to gold tooth anyway but i guess we could transfer it at a higher uh, transfer it at a higher degree also do we want anything from gold tooth is there any way we could get the uh, carrot krakaton from him mm, no hmm is that a curiosity Scrap Towers, is there anything that you're willing to trade? Minus 165. It's a little much. I mean, I suppose we could try to trade Valley of Horns, but it oh, it doesn't hmm, it doesn't border Karakrakaton. I just wanted those tusks of the additional research. Oh, well, not a big deal. We'll just, he could just have it. Uh, for money, so let's get you the militia camp as well. I guess we could build other things, but I'm just too lazy to do it. Uh, a recruiter for an harvest. You will probably need to start recruiting again relatively shortly. The question is what and where. Uh, first of all, Matorka. Let's do what we need to do here. And what we need to do is build one of these. A grazing meadow so that we can get some uh, uh, some of these things. Lyrian Reavers and Silver Helms. I'm going to pop into a little army. We may not have been... Well, we may not end up using that particular army. I'm not entirely sure as yet, but uh, we shall see. Uh, Rethia, Mage of Light. You're going to pop into this army. Like so. And we will see about getting additional additional death units. Oh. Well, we're going to send you to Carrick Dromar, so you're going to march stance and try to get there as quickly as possible, just so that Alistar doesn't have to deal with it himself. And we'll transfer you whatever needs to be transferred afterwards. A recruiter Fern Harvest, head to Barrack Var for now. And we may move you around after. Also depends on what exactly we want to build here. Let's do... Let's do an Elven Forge for the ability to build Tyrannoch Chariots. I did want to build some Tyrannoch Chariots for Lerithiriel. Although once again, we could just build it via Global Recruitment. Hmm. I don't know, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Let's uh, do whatever else we need to do in the meantime. Uh, Arathon, the you. Yeah, look, it's Bellacor again. Uh, are you able to reach him? I don't think so. Looks like you're very, very close, but just unable to, right? Attack. Yeah, not able to. Just move Garrulous over here. Ooh, if Garrulous moves close enough and doesn't go past you. Ah, he went past you. I was hoping that we'd be able to... Oh, maybe Garrulous was blocking us after all. All right, well, this is probably auto-resolvable. I know it's Bellacor, but, well... We have Bella the Ball, so we don't... Uh, we don't need to bother with him again. And we st will still probably move up northward to take Conquata. Uh, take Long Gi. I'll resolve this real quick. Nothing here is of any kind of threat to Arathon, though there's probably very few things in the entire world that are a threat to Arathon. Occupy. Ally mission successful, ally mission successful, and that is lovely. Uh, don't collect the income here just because I don't want to bother with the public order. And while we're at it, ally missions, cult of... Ooh, exiles in the heck, that one has to take priority. Uh, Pokol Daka. Who's the closest? Veritas Humongous. Un... Wait, wait, where are you, actually? Huh. Might be a possibility. And Steinbeck von Karsten also... Ooh, right. We got, uh... We got Archie moving in to retake Altdorf. I guess Attila and I will have to defend against it. We have to pick one of these guys. 
Hmm. And the problem with Puckle Daka is it might get attacked by... Where's Kotap? I don't see where his army went. Uh, somewhat concerning. <laughs> uh... Hmm. Okay, I just wanted to see whether they had the same ones. We could try Veritas Humongous, but what if he gets killed by these guys or moves away from us or just runs away from Feyadian? Pogaldaka has nowhere to run. Steinbeck might get killed by something else, though Orion's armies look relatively weak, to be fair. I'm gonna say maybe Steinbeck. And let's hope that that works out. All right, Cult of Sotek, Volanduil is the only option. Unlikely... Oh, you're on the coast. I don't like that. And the reason I don't like that is because uh, that uh, he might actually be sailing towards us somewhere. Interesting. Also, where is Hell Scurry? Huh. Either... Are you hidden here, perhaps? Kind of hard to tell where that is. Well, it's just rats being rats. Sneaky and everywhere. All right, actually, that also remind. I don't know why that reminded me, but uh, Recruiter Zam Dilly got two more turns on this. Teclas, you will want to finally get your Omen of Assyrian back. And we're at 17 out of 20. We're missing Disciple Oberman. And we are missing the two arcane phoenixes that are going to go into your army. But that is not all that much stuff missing. So, uh, you can go back into... Oh, yeah, you definitely need to go back into Channeling Stance and start moving towards the Vale of Woe. As you will be conquering Jarna Grund for us. Maybe we'll wait for the phoenixes, I don't know, not a, it's not a big deal either way. Uh, anyway, the reason I clicked here was this. Now we can recruit the dragon princes at one turn apiece. Don't have additional star dragon capacity, so we just have the one that we're building right now, but that's just fine. So, uh, let's start on those dragon princes. One, two, three. All we can build right now. We have a sufficient number of Sun Dragons and Moon Dragons. We need additional Phoenixes, but we don't have capacity for them. We also will want to recruit Phoenix Guard, which are going to take a while. I guess we can start on the first. These guys will probably send by ferry. In fact, probably should start ferrying them next turn. Do we have a troop ferry available to us? Enthal, you can act as a troop ferry, probably. Yeah, sure, Enthal. We're gonna have you ferry all that stuff down to Emmerich. It's going to take a long, a lot, and my lord, uh, it's gonna take a long time for you to get there. But it is what it is. Besides, honestly, Emmerich's been fighting with the few numbers of the uh, dragon princes and the dragons that he's had, and he hasn't needed any more than those three or four units uh, throughout the entire campaign. If they're just that strong, or Emmerich himself is just that strong, depending on how you look at it. Anyway, we need to deal with King Senna, so I guess, Arwenil, you're going to sail out, and whether they take Xandri or not, probably won't matter all that much. Hmm. Although I suppose, wait, should we trade Xandri to Cult of Sigmar? I'm not sure that we want to keep these territories. Once again, I'm, I'm I'm through with the admin in this campaign, or at least uh, I don't think we need any more territory, but anyway. Anyway, Igarl at the Palace of Ruin. We're going to pop you into Noble Prestige, and we're going to besiege the place. The enemy will... Oh, they basically have nothing left. Ah, they're just marauders and garbage. Well, you know what, to be fair, Bill Harithoi has attacked them many, many times, so just thought to resolve it, it's fine. I mean, if even the Illyrian Reavers aren't dying to the auto-resolve, you know that the auto-resolve is so in our favor, that the battle, rather, is so in our favor, and Bel Harithoik has proved her worth time and again. Anyway, occupy the place, we'll be trading it to Kata for, uh, after the militia camp is done, most likely. Hmm, but the money building. Anyway. Power Stone, Frigid Wasteland complete, although I guess we could check right now whether he's willing to trade Kowark for it. Uh, Kowark for the Palace of Ruin. 27, now we're gonna have to wait a couple of turns, but I'm willing to bet that he'll be willing. Plus we can give him the Glacial Gardens as well, and everything will be fine. Now, Malice, we need to chase you down. Sadly, by the looks of it, Morella will not be able to reach you. Morella, land right beside Blacklight Tower and try to chase him down. This guy's going to be an annoyance, isn't he? We'll just have to keep Lorna... Well, I guess she can move to Slaver's Point if she needs to. This could move towards us where he could go after these things. I suppose it doesn't matter over much. Yeah, we'll be fine, I'm sure. 
All right, what else do we have left? Uh, Architect Luaran, I'll deal with you between the episodes. Itilna, I suppose you have no choice now. Uh, but to, ooh, we could complete the quest by killing off Steinbeck unless he runs. Hmm. Or we could move to try to defend against Archaon's hordes here, plus Bastion Nightbane, who is, I believe, one of Archie's vassals and is moving together with him, which is kind of smart by the AI. Anyway, I think, unfortunately, we will have to deal with that next time, as we are pretty much out of time this time around. The, um, the interest has wanes, the engagement has dropped, and we are relegated now to the shorter episodes, and eventually will be moved to the other channel as well. But on the other hand, it'll make room for new campaigns and all that stuff. Uh, the uh, Space Marine campaign is up and running right now, and we've got Orion coming up probably this weekend. I haven't yet decided. Just going to have to take a look at some stuff. Anyway, more Emmerich to come nonetheless. I'm still having a blast with this particular campaign with the uh, with this glorious endgame. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.